The race is on for improved testing, treatment, and a vaccine for COVID-19. And one company is partnering with Microsoft to try and decide how the human immune system responds to the virus to try and make testing more reliable. Joining us right now is Chad Robbins. He is Adaptive Biotechnology CEO and co-founder. And Chad, we were going back and forth last week, uh, but this is a new announcement today. Let's talk about exactly what you're doing and how you're using data to try and make sure that you can make testing more reliable. How's it work? Sure. First of all, thank you, Becky, for having me back on the show. It's great to see you again. Um, yes, we just announced a study called Immune Race to study the impacts of COVID-19 on the human adaptive immune system. Uh, our bodies hold important information and clues that Adaptive can harness in our partnership with Microsoft to be able to take this information and create potentially better diagnostics and therapeutics uh, for, for this you know, horrible virus. Explain how that how that works. Right now, there are these tests where you take a, either a nose or a throat swab and, and you get uh, some some material from the virus and, and, and see how the body is kind of reacting to that. How does it break down? What what information are you looking at and how does that help you? Yeah, sure. If we we can break the diagnostic paradigm really into three different phases. Up front, there's a type of test called PCR testing that's looking at the presence of the virus itself. So if you talk about that throat swab or that nasal swab that's done, that's looking at the presence of the virus. What we're, we're trying to answer questions that are gaps in these paradigms and, and what in the diagnostics right now. So the issue up front is that these tests, these PCR-based tests, aren't picking up all of the people that have the virus, and these are called false negatives. Then in the middle, there's a segment of patients. We don't know yet which patients are gonna have lighter symptoms, cold and flu-like symptoms, and be able to recover earlier from the virus versus which patients are gonna require hospital stages or are at risk for mortality. And so one of the questions that, again, we're trying to answer is how we can stratify patients based on an immune response so we can determine you know, which patients need to be triaged for hospitals, hospital stays versus which will have lighter symptoms. And then on the, on the back end, there's testing called serology testing, um, which is looking for the presence of antibodies. Um, and there's issues on this testing, both with false negatives, but the bigger issue uh, is with false positive. Telling, telling a, a, a person or a patient that they've had the virus and giving them this kind of immune clearance to go back when go back to work when they actually haven't had the virus. And so we, along with kind of our partner Microsoft, which is just an extension of our existing you know, partnership, are trying to answer these questions so we can fill in the gaps um, you know, with the existing diagnostic paradigm. And importantly, I do, th do want to mention, um, we are generating this massive amount of data on the immune response, not only to develop our own test, but we're opening up this data to, to, to the public so that you, public health officials, uh, other biotech companies, uh, can, and even academic researchers can all use the data to come up with solutions, their own solutions for COVID-19. Yeah, that's hugely important and very laudable. And, and Chad, thank you for making sure that you're doing that right now. That's incredibly responsible. It's the thing to do to make sure that we are fighting this and everybody is getting ahead of this as fast as we can. Let me ask you a couple of questions, though. First of all, in terms of the, the testing that you're seeing so far, we, we've talked to a lot of different people about how reliable these tests are. Where, where would you say the reliability is right now and how much do you think you can improve it with these tests that you're undertaking right now? Yeah, so I, I think there's two issues on kind of the reliability of testing. Uh, one is on standardization, uh, and then the second is on really kind of the biology and what these tests are actually picking up. Um, first, I think the FDA has done uh, you know, a, a good job in, 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 in recent weeks of trying to kind of standardize some of these type of tests. Um, but I do think it's still, uh, you know, a big issue because there's many different test manufacturers uh, and all the tests are different. Uh, and it's, it's a real problem, not just to kind of have standardized testing, but then also to be able to then track and then trace the, uh, trace the spread of the virus. Um, and then there are certain biological issues, um, and I mentioned them before, about these tests uh, you know, I, you know, obviously they have, uh, you know, a, a strong utility in certain areas, but I think there are significant gaps um, that, that many, many people specifically who are, you know, carriers of the d disease and asymptomatic or just in general that the, the that up front the PCR tests are not picking up all the patients that uh, have it. And that, that that's a real issue. And then 
you know, again, on the back end, you know, the, the, the serology tests, you know, I think there's, I do think there's significant uh, issues with giving kind of a, a, an immune clearance um, based on a scan. And so what we're hoping to do and answer these questions, um, and, and it might be one or it might be all of these questions that we can answer with one test because we might be the only ones who are looking at this type of cell called a, a T cell that we think is, uh, you know, at the very least, um, it's complementary and can add to part of the solution. And at the very, you know, most, if you will, you know, that, that could potentially be a better on diagnosis up front and a, a real, a, a better at stratifying and then better at giving, you know, this a true clearance in terms of an immune scan. Chad, do you have any hypotheses about why some people, we know that this disease affects people who are older more, it affects people who have underlying conditions, whether that be obesity, diabetes, uh, breathing issues that they've had in the past, it affects them more. But there are other cases where it seems to hit one person very hard and not someone else. And I've, I've read a lot about potential theories behind that. I just wonder if you have one going into, into your research on this. Well, that's, Becky, that's a great question. And actually, that's one of the questions we're trying to answer. And we're trying to answer it kind of from, from the reverse. We're actually letting the immune system tell us, uh, you know, based on what the immune system is seeing, um, we can potentially uh, answer those questions by looking at different signatures of how our bodies are responding to the disease to understand that specific question of, you know, also specific questions of different geographies, different time points during the disease, in the disease course, and how that impacts different segments, different, uh, if you look at age, uh, these are all questions that by truly understanding the immune response to the disease, we, sh we hopefully uh, should be able to answer these questions.